Are you up for a bit of an adventure? You might know, if you're a regular visitor, I used to be something of a daredevil, and I've been known to tinker. This channel is, in fact, advertised as including DIY content. But admittedly, it's been a bit thin in that department for a while now. So, I was intrigued when a company named Makerfabs approached me to look at a couple of their products. I'm not sure if their name is a play on words, inverted, they could be Fab Makers of Stuff, or Makers of Fab Stuff, anyway. Either way, I'm guessing fabrication comes into play. But the products in question are a CF Express card, or rather a card enclosure, that converts a tiny 30mm NVMe 2230 SSD into a CF Express Type B card, and what can only be described as a novel CF Express card reader. More on that later. At this point, just like in my days as a mountaineering instructor, I stress that the following demonstration, should you decide to follow suit, is at your own risk. MakerFab's DIY CF Express card is, I think, an innovative way to save money in a big way. The enclosure itself goes for around $25 US. It comes with two parts, back and front, some thermal grease, which I avoided using, two heat sink strips and six teensy weensy screws, two extras in case uh, one or two fly off your workbench, and a screwdriver is included. And then you can decide what size SSD you want to install. SSD costs are around $75 Canadian, as low as $35 US. That process is relatively easy, depending on how nimble your fingers are. First, you apply one of two provided heatsink stickers to the base of the enclosure, then push in the SSD. Pretty straightforward. I used a 256GB Kioxia Toshiba SSD. I applied the second heatsink to the back of the enclosure, then came the fun. I must be a real fumble fingers because it took me a good 15 minutes to chase screws around the tabletop and finally get them seated into their respective tiny, tiny <laughs> threaded holes. Admittedly, I'm working with uh, newly implanted replacement lenses in my eyeballs and an unfamiliar pair of 1.50 reading glasses. Your mileage may vary. The resulting card looks kind of neat, all shiny and gold. On close examination, it certainly fits the DIY bill. If I had any reservations, I guess it would be the contacts. Um, we don't get to see those on store-bought cards. Here, they're in full view. And there's just this very thin covering of the leading edge of the metal enclosure. Inserting the card into the camera is a bit disconcerting at first. I find I have to hold it just so in order for it to slide in smoothly. But then it seats just fine. As far as performance, it's okay for both still photos and video. With some caveats, as far as read-write speeds, these fall just above my XQD cards and really can't compete with dedicated CF Express cards. In camera, they clock about half the performance of those when it comes to shooting in burst mode, and they write rather slowly. Still, I can report, because I put on my investigative reporter hat again, after interviewing other users, two in all, who've been using this option for several months now, that they've had no problems at all using several of them. I believe they installed uh, 256 gigabyte Samsung SSDs, but I think the point being that the enclosure, which is the part that connects with your camera, has proven to be reliable. For myself, would I use it for essential shoots? No, I don't think I would. I'm not ready to trust it to client or critical work. Not because um, I'd expect it to fail. I mean, the Keoxia Toshiba SSD should be reliable, as well as those from Samsung. I've used a number of Samsung SSDs for years now, uh, without any trouble. Touch wood. The enclosure, I guess, is the unknown factor, and I'd want to do my own long-term testing, say, I don't know, six months, on top of uh, that from my colleagues, who I'll keep in touch with. So I'll be using this more and get back to you on my and their experience. Again, I want to stress this is an at-your-own-risk adventure. 
But you can decide what card you want to install and switch it out should you decide later you want more storage or just try something new. And I'd love to know if this is something you'd be interested in trying. Are the savings enough to tempt? I'm a bit of a DIY guy myself, as it says in that YouTube header. Is this an area, CF Express cards, where you'd venture into DIY? Or have you tried one of these options? I think there's uh, a couple of enclosures available from different manufacturers. Anyway, let me know in the comments. This is actually the second DIY and the ME SSD I've tried, the other an M2 uh, I'll get back to you on how that's working out. Now to the card reader. Are you ready for this? <laughs> because here it is. Uh, yes, it's made from Lego, at least the enclosure. The innards consist of the bare reader unit and a cooling fan. Have you noticed that uh, your card reader gets warm in use? One or two of mine, uh, XQD and CF Express do, especially if I have them plugged in for a while. I'm not sure it's anything really to fret about, but <laughs> Maker Fabs is making damn sure this one stays cool. I don't know, maybe it'll combat thermal throttling. Anyway, I'm, I'm more of a Meccano kid than a Lego expert, and incidentally, I never had one of those um, electronics kits. I had friends that built radios with them. But yeah, I was more into building cranes than the odd model airplane. So, I brought in the expert, my wife, Amanda, whose career in childcare spanned four decades. Sure, we had to strip it down and rebuild it a couple of times, but eventually got it into working order. The untranslated Chinese instructions didn't help, particularly when it came to installing the fan. Make sure to plug that into the board of the reader gizmo before <laughs> burying it in Lego. But, you know, if you, if you have kids, you can put them to work on this. We actually sent a picture of the finished reader to one of Amanda's former charges, a five-year-old, and he thought it was really cool. And it works like a charm, as in it downloads images and video as rapidly as I need. I mean, yes, it is something of a novelty item, but it looks cool on my desk. The only downside I can see, aside from the noisy fan, is the possibility that visiting kids <laughs> are going to want to take it apart and turn it into a transformer or something. Well, why not? These sell for around $40 US. So, with both of these products, I guess it's going to come down to whether you think it's worth the DIY approach, if you like tinkering, and if the savings make up for the extra work in putting them together. But if you found this video useful or entertaining, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, we'd love to see you again. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. In the meantime, take care of yourself, cheers, and we'll see you later.